The Open Society and Its Enemies, Volume 2, by Karl Popper, was published in 1945 and is a continuation of his critique on oracular philosophy and historicism. After having spotted Hegel's charlatanism within his oracular historicism, Popper finds that the true and dangerous potential of Hegel's thoughts develop in the philosophy of Karl Marx and its aftermath in the 20th century. Marx, known for his critique of capitalism and own theory of socialism, believed that real philosophy cannot stop at merely interpreting the world, but has to actively contribute to its change for good. And what this good is for Marx is economic or generally material freedom, meaning the emancipation of all heavy labor. Formal or legal freedom, although Marx does not rate it low, turns out to be quite insufficient for securing to us that freedom which he considered to be the aim of the historical development of mankind. What matters is real, economic or material freedom. This can be achieved only by an equal emancipation from drudgery. This initial pursuit of material freedom, according to Marx, led to class struggle in the early days of human history. This began with the enslavement of one group of people of the other, making them their workforce in order to pursue anything else except for heavy labor, but becoming the master of a caste of servants in order to pursue things like politics, the arts, philosophy and other aristocratic activities brings the master into a new dependency, making him dependent on the slave and his work. Hence, the master becomes paranoid and pursues ideologically and physically the suppression of the slaves from which the slave, or worker, has to free himself. The worker has to abolish the class system and create a stateless, egalitarian society in which we all are emancipated in order to pursue activities that are meaningful to us. For Marx, this end is a historical necessity which is inscribed into the very core of humankind's destiny. So far, so good. Now, for Popper, Marx is not wrong with all of his thoughts, and he appreciates the humanistic mission of emancipation, but he refuses Marx's ideas of historical necessity, historical progress, a destined goal of humanity, and the idea that history itself is a history of class struggle. Instead of recognizing that historical interpretation should answer a need arising out of the practical problems and decisions which face us, the historicist believes that in our desire for historical interpretation, there expresses itself the profound intuition that by contemplating history, we may discover the secret, the essence of human destiny. Popper understands Marx's conclusions in light of his personal historical context in which liberal capitalism caused child labor, inhumane working conditions and the de facto enslavement of a working class under unfair contracts. Yet Popper sees in the years that have passed since then a gradual betterment and improvement of living conditions under capitalism through economic and democratic intervention of Western states. What Popper basically rejects is the idea of holism, an utopian master plan for the solution of all problems. What will really work, according to him, is a piecemeal approach to society, changing step by step problems after empirical assessment of the new situation. Such considerations lead us back to our plea for a piecemeal and against utopian or holistic methods of social engineering, and they lead us back to our demand that measures should be planned to fight concrete evils rather than to establish some ideal state. State intervention should be limited to what is really necessary for the protection of freedom. We must intervene, but knowing this to be a necessary evil, we should intervene as little as possible. Thus, we should try rather to achieve a free market by protecting its freedom rather than to control the market by state intervention. In Marx's theory, all strings intermesh. Plato's idealism, Aristotle's historical optimism, and Hegel's dialectic and idea of historical progress. 
Popper believes that even though admitting that Marx did never explicitly argue for a violent revolution and a radical installment of utopian ideals, his work resonated in his readers and believers, leading humans to become enemies of the open liberal society, thus choosing historicist tribalism of a closed society. The book ends with the claim that Instead of posing as prophets, we must become the makers of our fate. We must learn to do things as well as we can and to look out for our mistakes. And when we have dropped the idea that the history of power will be our judge, when we have given up worrying whether or not history will justify us, then one day, perhaps, we may succeed in getting power under control.